In a new special, we're taking a look at a hometown hero who blazed his own trail as a cyclist. Finding Indiana highlights historical people, places, and organizations that have shaped our state. News 8's Randall Newsom has the story of one of those people, a man who helped to put Indiana on the map, Marshall Major Taylor. In a world that's now full of black superstars in sports, he was the first, Marshall Walker Taylor. But you can call him Major. He was born on November 26, 1878 in Indianapolis, one of eight children. He would go to work with his father, and his father worked as a coachman for the Southerd family, Albert Southerd, and they had a son named Daniel. And Daniel was around the same age as Major. From age eight until he was 12, Taylor spent much of his time with the wealthy family, keeping Daniel company. They eventually employed him as their son's companion, giving him the same clothing and education. But the biggest gift was yet to come. And so when Daniel received a bicycle, Major also received a bicycle. And so he would learn to ride the bike and he would ride and he would learn to do trick riding. There's no doubt Taylor's circumstances were unique, especially for a black child in Indiana during the 1800s. But soon his comfortable life would be upended. In 1890, the Southerns moved to Chicago, leaving Taylor behind. But he would soon find himself on a new path, one that would change the course of his life. He would also work at a local bicycle shop, the Hay and Willis Bicycle Shop. Mr. Hay was so impressed by Taylor, he offered him a new job, paying $6 a week and a $35 bicycle, hoping that his talents would allure more customers to his store. Every day at 4 p.m., Taylor would perform stunts in a military uniform in front of the store, which earned him the nickname Major. And with a push from Mr. Hay, he entered his first race at 13 and won. By 15, he was smashing records in amateur contests across the state. By 1898, he had already set seven world records. By 1899, he had won the World One Mile in Montreal, Canada, and he was also a sprint champion that year. Taylor's journey was picking up speed after gaining the attention of former cycling champion Louis Bertie Munger who believed heavily in Taylor's racing ability. In exchange for housework, Taylor would receive the training he needed to nurture his racing career as Bertie's protege. Despite his early victories, Taylor still couldn't escape the stark reality of racism. There were many cyclists who had difficulties racing against him, both from the speed factor and then also from the race. He had many difficulties where cyclists would actually caused physical harm. There was at one point that he was choked nearly unconscious, another point where he was elbowed. Despite that, he became the sport's top athlete and in popular demand. Taylor negotiated his own contracts and earned himself a place as one of the wealthiest black people in the country. Racing promoters from overseas were taking notice. He would then leave the United States and experience and race in many places around the world, becoming an international superstar. Taylor's winning streak would continue from 1901 to 1904. He eventually retired in 1910 at 32 years old. After various debts and serious illnesses, he lost most of his fortune in the 1920s. Two years before his death, he wrote and self-published his autobiography, The Fastest Bicycle Rider in the World. Taylor died in 1932. He was 53 impoverished and buried in an unmarked grave. A group of pro bike racers donated money to have Taylor's body buried properly. During the 1980s, Indianapolis honored his hometown hero with the completion of the Major Taylor Velodrome in Marion University, honoring the man who blazed his own trail.